All right, I'm here with uh, Sevon and Kerry. Kerry's the guy you don't see very much. Sevon's the guy you see all the time. Uh, Kerry's the guy behind the camera, giving the uh, snide comments and uh, doing all the magic behind the uh, ass whooping editing. Kerry? All right, so we're here with you guys. Uh, you're doing a big project. You've been sending us videos. And uh, those videos have been putting up on the site. But they're not the video. They're actually they're, they're separate from your movie. So what's the, what's the relationship? Yeah, so basically what Kerry and I have been doing is we are producing this movie and the climax of the movie is the CrossFit Games. So we traveled around North America and we did vignettes on some of the top athletes, both male and female, and then we'll take all this footage after the games and put it together and hopefully have a fantastic, you know, uh, hour to hour and 45 minute movie. And is this a movie that people are going to try to see in the theaters or is it going to be distributed by CrossFit? Who owns the movie? Is it your movie? That, uh, is it CrossFit's movie? What's, what's, what's that? The goal is always theatrical release, you know, so when we're making a product, we're always going for the best product possible. Um, the movie, it's the partnership uh, between Grecian Pictures and CrossFit, and uh, CrossFit has always done things to their best ability, and we hope that, um, that we, can, we can achieve that goal also with CrossFit and also with this movie. But even if it doesn't get a theatrical release, I still think it will be a fantastic movie, and uh, it will really excite the people in the CrossFit community and, and, and bring some, uh, some behind the scenes that people don't get to see when they're only watching the, the workouts. Meaning you, 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 look, you talk to them about their training, their, their family life, uh, all that? Absolutely. We have, you know, we have great footage of these people in their natural setting. So how many people know that James Fitzgerald is this amazing, fantastic dad who lives on the outskirts of Calgary in this basically what I call this CrossFit ashram. I mean, it's an awesome place. And, we, and, and he had us there for four days and he opened his life up to us like an open book and we capture it. And you can see what goes into the making of this uh, amazing athlete besides just training. It's, it's all sorts of discipline, you know, spiritual, mental, a lot of family support, love, great father, disciplined, I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And we did that with a lot of characters. Uh, is uh, Matt Mursky also uh, living in an ashram? Matt Mursky uh, opened up his life to us also. It was fantastic. Um, he showed us his old CrossFit gym and his new CrossFit gym. He introduced us to his family. We went, um, we met his dad. Um, his dad told us all sorts of amazing stories about how Matt Mursky was a young boy and was a one-man track team for his Catholic school. And so Matt would compete by himself against other schools that had 30 people on the track team. <laughs> and that's just like one story and one little element we're gonna bring to the movie to show, you know, Matt's this phenomenal athlete. Now he's parlayed it into the mm -hmm. Superman that's gonna compete at the CrossFit Games. Right, all right. Uh, so we know, Sevan, your, your face, uh, you've been sort of a jokester, prankster, uh, ass whooping, uh, all that, uh, Carrie. What's uh, what's your role? How how long have you have you been working? I can tell you all about Kerry. <laughs> Kerry's cool. He's a cool guy. Um, we've known each other for a while. We get along fantastic. We're a great team. Um, he helps me out on a lot of it's things. Like an eclipse. Just uh, you hold know. on. He wants to say something. <laughs> it's it's like an eclipse, a permanent eclipse being uh, near Savon. You know, it's like a, it's this huge heavenly body, and you're just like always in its shadow. You know, I think most people feel that even when when he interviews them on camera. But as long as I'm standing behind the camera, then I at least can get some sunlight. It's a it's a beautiful beautiful metaphor. Yeah, thanks, Gary. Really, the truth is, you do all the work. <laughs> That is the truth, actually, yeah, and Savon's, uh, he's using this opportunity, I think, right now to sort of recite the entire movie and get it out right now to make it seem like he's actually the one that's putting it to the pieces together and whatnot. He's got all the, he's building the characters for all of you at home. Well, really, the truth of the matter is, is that that's all going to be done later by me, by myself. Yeah. Buddy. The legitimacy of all sports and the way they're presented, that tone has already been set. It's been set for the past 20 years by football, baseball, and basketball. And so anytime you break out of that, that tone or that way that it's represented to the public, there's going to be concern that it's not legitimate if we're not following directly in their footsteps. And clearly CrossFit is only following in those in the footsteps in one way. It's demanding the best performance out of people, but in every other way it's not. And so there's sort of this disconnect. How can all these amazing athletes be part of this program that's not following the path, the sterile path of other professional sports? And so that's, I can see their perspective, but I'm glad that um, Greg and the CrossFit crew is open to uh, letting a little bit of realism, you know, 
every day my life has nudity in it. That's part of my life. Like I shower in the buff. So I don't, you know. Yeah, I, your girlfriend's naked right now. Yeah, that's how we roll. <laughs> um, all right, but you were starting to say that Carrie actually does all the work. You saw the video where I'm on John Wellborn's shoulders and you can't tell that I'm on his shoulders. That's basically how it is with Carrie and I. I just sit on his shoulders and I just don't let anyone see. Uh, when did you start working with Seven? When did you realize that the only way you were going to make it is to uh, hop on his coattails and, 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 and be drug up to levels of fame and success? Well, I think we've, we've actually started plotting our, uh, our takeover of the world when probably, probably somewhere in high school, actually, it was uh, some, some stick drawings with uh, some rough outlines of the globe on, uh, on one of our notebooks, actually. Coming back to the CrossFit movie, uh, how much of this is a movie about the CrossFit Games? How much is this a movie about five, seven different characters in the CrossFit world? What is the movie really? There are two ways that we're looking at the movie, and whichever way the, the footage wants to go, we'll let it go that way. I'll tell you one way, and then I'll have Kerry go ahead and tell you the other way. I think he says the other way better than I do. The first, the, one of the ways that the, the movie could possibly go is um, basically like Rocky. You meet the characters, and then at the end there's a fight. The movie has really nothing to do about boxing, but at the end, it's determined the climax of the movie is the, is the boxing match. So that's one way that this movie can go. It's, re it's really a story about um, human, human beings and their passion, and the setting is the CrossFit world, and the climax of the movie is the games. And the, relation, the relationship between CrossFit and the people is the people are the movie, and CrossFit is the landscape. You know, that mm -hmm. they're kind of like living this CrossFit dream, but it's not really about, it's not really about per se CrossFit. It's about people and their reaction to CrossFit and their desire to achieve goals. And it's, it's, it's bigger than CrossFit. And, and, the, and the reason why we, we have this vision is we want the movie to be compelling to all walks of life. So it translates to, to anyone who wants to persevere and anyone who wants to be the best can get something from this movie. You don't just have to be like, a guy who wants to do a million thrusters but if you happen to also be a crossfit fan the movie will hit you on that many more levels right so what's this other uh, angle oh well i'm not exactly sure what the other <laughs> angle that is but i mean i guess sort of just fleshing out um you know the angle that Savon was describing i mean it, it it is actually the crossfit story as well as as everything he just said it's the crossfit story as told through these featured athletes experiences you know and as they get ready for the games but also what drives them to focus so hard on on something that really isn't even it's just like almost like a, a, a sport being birthed right now you know like i mean it's it's in its infancy at, at best and and so it's it's this it's it's basically you know exploring <coughs> why why these people hardcore crossfitters who are choosing now to call this their sport you know they maybe have may have been gifted athletes in other sports in the past but but it seems to be a common thread now that that a lot of these these elite level crossfitters that we've profiled you know they've taken crossfit on as their sport now they don't they're not training for other sports um, and so it, it, it is actually the story of what makes crossfit crossfit like what what is it about crossfit that motivates these people to reach such a high level performance when there really is, aren't the, the natural rewards that, that one might get by following an established sport. You know, the recognition one might get by becoming the greatest football player in the world and the money obviously that goes with that and et cetera, et cetera. So Sevan, uh, the, the whole point of the ass whipping videos yes. was to get you ready to compete in the games. Yes, I And uh, you're not. Yes, true. And uh, I suppose you're gonna say something lame like, you have to make a movie about the games and, and uh, therefore you can't compete in no. the games simultaneously? The truth is the games are totally out of my league mentally. I am mentally not capable of the games. The games are fucking insane. People who do the games, I bow down to their <clears throat> mental, emotional fortitude, their dedication. It's, it's, it's freaky. You know, it's fun to talk about eight months out but to sign up and actually do it. And I've had the privilege of being here, you know, three days early and I got the grand tour of the course by Dave Castro and it's, it's scary. It's, um, this is probably going to ruin some people to alter their, their destiny. <laughs>
I, I also think that the people are blessed by the weather because oh, yeah. the weather here could have been f literally 40 degrees warmer. Right now, I think it's probably 72 degrees. It would not be unheard of if right now this year was 112 degrees. I mean, so the people are very, very lucky. I mean, this is probably, this probably isn't going to happen again. If they do the games again here next year, yeah. it's going to be... Yeah, not, not mid-90s is, is very typical for this time of year. P and people like James who are training up in Canada, I think that's going to give a tremendous... I don't know if advantage is the right word, but it's going to level the playing field for him because he's used to training in, you know, 40, 50, 60 yeah. degree, and I think this is really going to help him out. Yeah, yeah, the morning, the first workout could could be uh, 50, 58, 60 degrees. Um, all right, gents, well, let's get back to work. we got a bunch to plan. Do it. All right, yeah.